not a con. Standards-based slideshow system, which uh, takes a single uh, XHTML document and turns it into a slideshow in your web browser. And I'm going to look at where that came from and uh, some of the design decisions I made and where it's uh, where it's possibly going in the future. Uh, it sounds like I'm louder now. Did that? Did I come through? Okay. So. Um, let me just start off with I hate PowerPoint. Not because it's from Microsoft, I just hate PowerPoint. Um, and I thought I was the only one because I kept seeing PowerPoint everywhere. That We'll get to the rest of that story later on. Um, so for a, at one point I was doing slideshows um, as a series of HTML documents. Basically, you know, here's a page. Every slide was a, was a separate document, and then you clicked on a link to go to the next slide. Okay, that works. But then Opera, back in the whenever it was, Opera five or six or something, came up with this thing called Opera Show. Actually, it might have even been before that, where you could have. Uh, this was something that had always been implicit in CSS two where you could have a single XHTML document and then using um, the page break properties in CSS2, you could define the boundaries between slides in a projection medium style sheet. One of the uh, media value types in CSS2 is projection. So in a sufficiently advanced system, uh, you could, for example, have a screen media style sheet that presented the document on a little podium screen, and then a projection media style sheet that styled the, the sheet, that styled the document differently as it was being projected. In theory, that's actually never happened, and I kind of wish it had because then the presenter could have the outline view, and then everyone else could see the slides. Anyway, but what Opera does, if you put it into the full screen view, where's my mouse? Here it is. It would apply a projection medium style sheet. Now you can see that this particular projection medium style sheet is not in the greatest shape. Um, but this is exactly the same document I had before. And to switch between slides, I just hit page down, page up. This is page down to go forward and page up to go backwards. OK, so that's great. I can just have this one document and a few style sheets, and I can put it up on the web where people can see it in outline view, or if they have Opera, they can flip it into Opera show mode and get it as a, as a slideshow. That's pretty neat. Well, of course, as you can see, um, if you wrote your style sheets under one version of Opera and then Opera changes its rendering, you run into problems like this. I, I assure you, when I presented this talk originally back in uh, 2003, it didn't look like that. Um, the other thing, of course, is that it's you're exchanging one proprietary solution, one, one lock-in solution, if you will, um, PowerPoint, for another not quite so locked-in, but still fairly locked-in uh, solution. The XHTML document, of course, I could put up for anyone to see. But the slideshow is only visible in Opera. Right. OK, so maybe that's OK, because it's, it's still based on XHTML. And Opera is this scrappy little Norwegian startup. And it's all cool with the karma. And I'm you know, not bowing to the Redmond behemoth and whatever, if you want to go to that level. And if you don't, then that's fine, too. Um, so here's the problem that I ran into. Uh, Opera 7.5 came out for the Mac. This is 7.54. But in Opera 7.5, you can see I haven't paid for my copy of Opera. Right. And in 7.5, the banner ad stayed when you went to slideshow view. You put up your slideshow, and there was this big banner ad across the top of it. That's not going to work. Um, now, it turns out that was a bug. But it was a bug that I, you know, I, it was a problem. Until they fixed it, I couldn't use Opera Show for my presentations. I didn't really want to go back to PowerPoint. Well, at about that time, um, Tontek Celik, who wrote most of the rendering engine for Internet Explorer 5 for the Macintosh. He's now at, uh, now at Technorati. 
This is a copy of one of his presentations. He was doing something that was a more cross-browser uh, friendly. And it, it uses also one uh, XHTML document with some CSS to lay out, the, lay out the, the document. And you just you switch between slides by clicking on one of these little buttons here in the, in the footer. Okay? So you can go back and forth. And that's all really cool. And the way that works, I have a modified version of it here, is basically the CSS at runtime lays out all of the slides on top of each other and then hides all of them. And then there's a little bit of JavaScript that just displays whichever slide you're supposed to be on. That's how it works. The whole thing. Really smart. But also, you know, I mean, you look at it and it's also kind of... Uh, I mean, it's fairly limited. If you, want to, if you want to go to slide, you either have to click on those, or if you uh, know how to invoke access keys, you can do that. Um, of course, I can never remember from one platform to the next how to invoke access keys. But this is, this is uh, one of his presentations. You can see it's XHTML, and he's got the namespace because he's Tontech, and he does everything correctly, and so on. And then here's the style sheet, okay, which in here, where did the dot slide go? Div dot slide, which is every single one of these slides is, is surrounded by a div with a class of slide. He has visibility hidden. That hides them all. And then the way he has it set up, slide one is set, set to visibility visible. So that makes the first slide appear. And then in the JavaScript, here's his JavaScript. And this is it. Basically says, we're starting at slide one. The maximum number of slides is six. If the go function is, is fired, you know, increment or decrement, depending on which direction you're going, uh, what our current slide number is. And if you, get to the, if you get to one of the ends, wrap around to the other end. So that was it. And if you look at the markup, I mean, the markup's, it's very simple markup. The same kind of markup that you would see in an Opera Show presentation. Uh, the difference being that in Opera Show, you could say something like H2 page break before. And so before every H2, which hopefully you had every slide title as an H2, it would stick in a page break, which meant a slide boundary. In Tontek's case, he wrapped each slide in a div, gave it a class of slide, and then ID'd each one, S1, S2, S3, whatever. And then inside that is just XHTML, which he styled. And that was great. I actually used this for... Um, a couple of conferences because, you know, Opera Show had this banner bug and <laughs> I needed something. Fortunately, he was doing this. Um, but I quickly came up against some problems. The first of which was all of the IDs are in here explicitly. They're baked into the structure. Well, I rearrange my slideshows a lot when I'm working on them. <laughs> um, I insert slides, and I think, oh, I should illustrate this point more. And then I realize that I went on too long with a point, so I get rid of a slide, and I swap order around. And I was continually having to reorder my IDs, and it was just driving me up a wall. Um, so I started to think about it. And actually, uh, here's an example, actually, of a talk I gave last year at Nauticon using Tontex. Um, using Tontex slideshow, this is, this is the document. Except uh, I gave it my own theme, basically. But that's, uh, that's an example of the getting friendly with XHTML, um, which I did last year. But I started to think about it, and I realized, well, you know, we already, we already need the JavaScript to make slides appear and disappear. And why don't I just at runtime go through the document structure and every div that has a class of slide, I'll dynamically assign it the ID that I want. So rather than having the, the slide numbers baked into the structure, I'll assign them dynamically. And that way, I don't have to worry about what order they're in. Um, you know, I can rearrange the slides like I always do. And then when I load up a presentation, boom, there it is. It's ready to, you know, it's ready to go. Uh, it, it'll handle all that numbering for me. And so I did that. And I thought to myself, well, gosh, if I'm already walking the document structure and I'm already picking up where these slides are, I could build myself a little like pop-up menu that would let me jump from slide to slide sort of arbitrarily. 
and I could, I could do that kind of thing, and that might be handy. So this is the theme, actually, that I had written to go with, with context setup. Um, but this is sort of what ended up happening. Um, let me uh, bring this down. Now, you, you'll notice that there's already a problem, perhaps, but we'll, we'll get there. So this, uh, yeah, this was built dynamically, pretty much. Um, let me grab my notes while I'm at it. Um, so this was just built basically I was once I hit a slide I would I would go in and grab the first heading assume that that was the uh, the slide title and uh, numbered them up and threw it all in an option list and added some more JavaScript so that if I said yeah I want to go straight to the S5 default file structure it would go straight to the S5 you know like that um, now at this point, I was thinking, I was, you know, feeling kind of, ooh, gosh, I, I program JavaScript, yay me. Um, I, you have to understand, I don't do that a lot. Um, it's been a long time since I did anything where I would think of myself as being a programmer. Um, in fact, uh, Turbo Pascal 4.5, rock the house, yeah. Um, I was really good with that. Anyway. Um, that was, yeah, back in the dark ages, otherwise known as the early 1990s. Um, late 80s, early 90s. So I was feeling pretty good about that. And I figured, you know, I did this, and it's, it's interesting. And there are a few people out there who might be interested in it. And I'll toss it up on MeyerWeb in my tools directory, and I'll, I'll announce it. You know, 12 other people in the entire world will ever care. And I'll probably, I could probably name them all. They'd be people like Jeffrey Zeldman and Dave Shea and you know, Doug Bowman and Dan Cederholm and you know, people who are doing presentations like mine about standards who would want to do the presentation and say, and look, it's all based on standards. And they would be the only, right? So I was wrong. Um, there were a lot of people who thought this was really cool. And um, they started contributing stuff. So at some point, uh, somebody said, yeah, that's really cool that you got the jump menu and all that, and, and I like the menu, I like the little buttons, and you've got the access keys, and that's great, but it'd be even better if you could do something like hit the space bar and advance a slide, or click on a slide and advance a slide, or, you know, things like that. And I was like, yeah, that'd be great. How, how, how do I do that again? Because I don't know the JavaScript. Uh, and so they would contribute code, and they would point me to examples. Um, the, uh, the original... The, the code in here, the one that the one that handles the, you know, go up or down or whatever using various keys, uh, was um, well, it's based on MozPoint, which is a Mozilla-based PowerPoint type thing where they had this sort of keyboard handling. Um, although the way that the way that MozPoint worked is. Um, it took a document and then split it up so that you had one page per slide again. Which I, I was, by this point, I was to the point of, well, if it's not all in one document, I don't really care. Um, and then at some point I decided, hey, let's, uh, let's add a thing so that if you hit the T key, or if you hit this, uh, this little button here, it'll toggle back to the outline view. So that you can see it in outline view and kind of go through it when you're, when you're reviewing it, and then flip it back to the slideshow view. And gosh, that, why not? Um, so I did all that, and you know, it went back and forth, and um, basically, this 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 is this is at this point, it had become the perfect example of I had the need that I needed to address, and so I addressed it, and then discovered, rather to my surprise, that a lot of other people either had the same need or were interested enough in the solution to decide that they had the same need which was kind of odd in a way. Um, but see, I hadn't realized how the world had changed um, since I'd left college. Uh, apparently, professors present using PowerPoint now, like all the time. I, I didn't know that. <laughs> when I left college, nobody used PowerPoint, because the, when I left, well, and I say left, when I graduated from college, um, I th I'm trying to remember. Win well, Windows 3.1 was the version of Windows that was the most recent. 
3.11 or 